In this video, we're going to combine flower photography with water drop photography. I'm going to take this flower I bought yesterday, it's a little bit wilted already, and I'm going to spray it with as much mist as possible to get it really wet. And I can see thousands of little beads of water on this flower now. And what I want to do is get as close as possible to some of these petals and some of the details on the flower. And to do that, I'm going to use some extension tubes. So currently my magnification on this lens is one to one. Everything that appears on this camera is life size. And I want to try and change that so it's at least two to one. And I'm going to use extension tubes for that. So I'm going to just place this in here for now. We'll start by turning the camera off. And let's try all of these extension tubes. I really want to get up close and personal with this one. So we've got all three. So we're going from 100 millimeters here to 120, 50, 65, 165. Now remember, we're now adding the weight of this lens onto a fairly cheap plastic element in the middle here and attaching it to the camera. If this was a heavy lens, then I would be very, very cautious about doing this because you might break the connections here. You don't want the weight to snap. So a much heavier lens, you'd probably want to use something to support this. Maybe you could even mount a tripod underneath. This is just light enough that I'm not too concerned about it though. So we've changed our lens from a one-to-one -one magnification factor to I'm not sure what, but I'll be able to tell you when I see it. And let's just start off by taking a test photo. So as always, when I take a test photo, no flash, I'm going to bring the aperture all the way down to f2.8 and probably the ISO up to, let's say 500 and shutter speed at 1 40th. I'll go into live view, try and find this flower. Wow, there we go. That's cool. And that's really cool because we're getting the texture here from the side and all the little bits of water dropping off it. And that's just my first composition. So that looks really good. If I want to magnify this even further, I can take this thread off. This is a thread adapter to put a flash on the end of my lens. I'll take that off and I'm gonna add in this little magnifying glass to the end of the lens. So this is called a Raynox macroscopic lens. Just clips on like so, and we've magnified even further. So let's see, that's really cool. Oh yeah. Now take another photo here so you can see. Now because of the magnification, everything is very shallow when it comes to depth of field. So I'm gonna now switch to probably F11 we'll start at here. And I know that means I'm gonna have to have either a flash or a very slow shutter speed. So we'll start with a slow shutter speed. We'll put the ISO at 800 and we'll just adjust the shutter speed using live view until we see something we like. So I'm gonna leave it first of all at 1 40th of a second and you'll see that you barely see anything in this. And I'm going to adjust the shutter speed until we find an exposure we're happy with. And that's, it's, it's telling me it's one stop underexposed but I don't think that's quite accurate and it is 1.3 second exposure. And that's really cool. The alternative to increasing the shutter speed is to bring that shutter speed back to where it was. So let's go back to let's do 100th of a second. And instead we can turn on a wireless flash. And just put a flash unit above. The flash won't fire if I'm in live view. So I'm gonna turn the live view off. And that's really nice. So let me see, now I'm gonna compare those two photos. I do have some studio lights here and here, and that's illuminating the scene. But if I go back, I can now compare those two photos. I have to say, I do much prefer the flash. Um, there's not a huge difference, but where there is a difference is in the shadows. So if I take a photo without a flash, the shadows aren't as strong, and there's not so much contrast between the well-lit parts and the darker parts. I like to have those highlights and shadows in my photos. So I'm gonna use a flash to continue taking photos. And I can still experiment further by adjusting the position of the light. And 
until I have something I'm happy with. So that's the first set of photos taken. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into Live View so I can rearrange my composition and change my settings so I can see everything again. And while staying focused, I'm gonna move this flower around until I find a new composition I like. I think that looks pretty cool. So again, let's change settings back. We'll do F11 and 100th of a second. ISO is 800 still. And I'm gonna fire this flash. That's really cool. We're getting loads and loads. Even in this, there's probably a hundred different little dots of water across these petals. I'm picking that up really well in the detail here. I think that flashlight is a little bit too direct, so maybe I'll come from over here. Or from over here. Oh, that's nice. Good strong contrast there. And the great thing about this setup is you've watched me do the whole process. It takes a matter of minutes and you can just have something as simple as a two day old flower and a spray bottle of water and still experiment and get some really great results just sitting in your living room. Let's go back and experiment the composition again. So once again, I'm gonna adjust the exposure settings so I can see in live view. Let's try and get close. I don't want to touch it. So we're using a glass here. I'm gonna take it out of the glass. Let's see if we can get it like that. Once again, live view off, over to F11, 100th of a second. And I'm gonna take a photo here. It's a little bit too direct with the flash there. Let's go from the side, a bit dark. That's nice, but again, the flash is a bit obvious in this scene. And as you see, it is really just experimentation. There's no right or wrong way to do this. That's cool. So I'm getting details of the little pollinated area, the small petals in the center, and some of that dark patch in the middle. I'm gonna try and experiment just a little bit further by decreasing the size of the aperture so I can get a bit more depth of field. I'm gonna do F22 here. Now, obviously we've gone, and that last photo was at F8, not F11. So we've gone from F8 to F11 to 16 and 22. So in that process, I've halved the exposure three times, which means I need to change the exposure on this three times to match. I'm at 1, 128 here. So I can go to 164, 132, and 116 for three stops exposure change. And again, you'll see we get pretty much exactly the same exposure, although I've changed three stops of the aperture, I've compensated it with the flash here, and we get basically the same photo, which is great. Only this time we have more depth of field, which is really valuable when it comes to a shot like this. I do think we can push it just a little bit further though, and if we narrow the aperture one stop further from f22 to f32, we'll get an even deeper depth of field, which is really important in close-up photography. So I'm gonna change it to F32 now, and I'm going to adjust the output power of the flash from 1 1 16th to 1 8th here. And let's see if we can get that same photo with just a little bit more depth of field. And I think you'll see from those photos that there is an improvement to the depth of field. You can see more detail in the flower and these water drops. Now that I have settings I'm really happy with, I'm gonna do just a little bit more experimentation and adjust the composition further. So let's go all the way down to F 2.8. And with this composition, we're just focusing on those larger petals. Let me change the exposure settings once more. The directness of that light makes it seem as though there's a little bit of movement. So I'm gonna come from the side I do think we could probably improve that focus. And now that I'm happy with the focus and the composition, I'm gonna just mess around with the light a little bit more. I think the power might be too high. Let me down a little further to just 1 16th power. I love the shape 
and detail in these balls of water as well as the texture from the shadows in the background. I think that's my favorite photo there. You can see how many different photos you can get from just a simple spray bottle of water and a flower. And if you can control the light using an off-camera flash like this, or even if, even if you can't and you have ambient light that you can use, you can still get some great results. It's so good to be able to get even closer than the macro lens will allow me to do with these two accessories, the extension tubes and the magnifier that goes in the end of the lens. And I love taking photos like this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the links in the description below. I have an entire course dedicated to macro photography. And if you like this video, you're going to love that course. I've taken some really tremendous macro photos in my time with the most basic and cheap gear that you can find. It really is possible. So thanks for watching. Also, if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. We're releasing new videos every Monday at 12 p.m. London time, so you can get your fix of photography every single week. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.